What's going on, America? This is Kevin from Kevin's Corner. Yeah, I'm out on location. Anyway, been following some news stories, and I was watching The Five, and they were showing an interview that the same lady who interviewed the young man from from um, Kentucky, right, she was interviewing this guy, Nathan Phillips, again, and I'm thinking, for what? I mean, why are you interviewing a liar? Why are you interviewing a professional victim? Why aren't you taking the gloves off during this interview like you tried to take the gloves off on the young man? Hmm? Why aren't you asking tough questions? Nah, not about his feelings and his view on the whole situation. No, those aren't tough questions. What about questions like, why would you pretend to be a Vietnam vet um, who, who, you know, was, I guess, has some action perhaps, even if you didn't say it blatantly, you just let everybody believe it. Why did you go AWOL several times? I don't understand why she didn't ask these questions. Why were you and the rest of your posse uh, trying to invade a, a, a church service, beating your drum? And on the video, we clearly hear the one lady say, I'll look out for the cops. Why do you need to look out for the cops if you're just peaceful protesters that aren't looking to start controversy? These are questions that I know I would have had. Um, why did you lie about saying that the boy stood there and wouldn't let you move or retreat? You know, why did you lie about that the boys just surrounded you, you know, came up to you and just decided to surround you and make you afraid? Why did you lie about their intentions, saying that they, they were angry and, and all that hate and they wanted to rip me to pieces? I'm sure that's what they were thinking, even though they were all laughing, rejoicing, celebrating. Huh? I'm not sure if he's good at reading body language, but um, hands in your pocket or smiling, you know, and dancing and stuff like that normally aren't the signs that someone wants to rip you into pieces. Um, these are just questions if I was doing the interview, I would I would be asking. So it leads me to believe that somehow the liberal media is still trying to run interference and have damage control concerning uh, their intentions to demonize the kids. They're, what they're doing now, they're equally distributing the blame. They're still not saying, let's put this story to bed because it's obvious that this guy is a professional victim. He's a liar, okay? And um, we don't want to be associated with giving him some type of accolades, some type of platform to continue to be a victim. Uh, we want to go ahead and tear this man to pieces, and I ain't talking about physically. I'm talking about just like he tried to tear these young men to pieces concerning their reputation, their character, their behavior, their intentions. Um, take the gloves off. See, and now what they're doing is they're trying to equalize the damage. They're trying to say, now, now, there were, there were bad things on both sides. I mean, there were things that were done wrong on one side and things that I'm going, no, 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 it wasn't. See, um, you're trying to do what y'all accused Donald Trump of doing when he was actually correct when he said down in, in, um, in uh, I think it was Virginia, West Virginia, uh, one of those places. What, when the whole situation where he, he they swept him down, he didn't demonize both parties, you know. I mean, he, he must be supporting white supremacists. He didn't he didn't say that they were evil and wicked and, and he said that there were bad actors on both sides and surely there wasn't. Um, and come to find out, really there was. But now all of a sudden they're using the same tactic. Well, well no, there was, there was fault on both sides. And I'm saying, hmm, how can you say there were faults on both sides when the boys were standing off minding their business he came over to them he could have went to the hebrew israelites how do you think that would have played out if he'd have walked up to one of the brothers banging the drum in their face since his goal he claimed was just to defuse the situation why go to the kids why don't you start with the responsible people the adults why don't you go over to them and say why are y'all over here yelling at these little kids why don't y'all go ahead and leave man Leave these kids alone. But instead, instead, he decides, I'm going to go over and confront the boys, but not even not even tell them anything. Not open my mouth. Not tell them, hey, man, uh, look, guys, relax. Is it Nothing like that. The normal way that men should communicate uh, if they have good intentions versus they just come up and don't let their intentions be known. Uh, they just stand there in front of you beating a drum. Um, you know, try it sometimes, people. Let's see.
how that behavior would work. You know, maybe I'll just go into McDonald's and just stand there for a while, beating the drum, looking at the lady who's going, can I help you? No, I'm not going to talk to you. I'm just beating my drum and staring in your face and sing songs in another language that you don't even understand. I think that person would feel a little uncomfortable. They might get a little concerned. They might call the fuzz, or they might just stand there with that, that smile on their face like, okay, I don't know what to do. Uh, I guess I'm just going to stand here and look at this guy beat his drum. Okay, what's your message? Why didn't you make it clear, Mr. Native American man who lied about the kids? Um, yeah. See, these are all things that inquiring minds, legitimate inquiring minds, not the ones that want to um, hang on to their hatred towards Donald Trump and their narrative and, and their belief that somehow we got to find a wicked character. We got to find a tick on these boys because every dog has a tick on it, right? And they search them real hard. Well, well, um, what about the video that shows them doing this? Oh, that was three points. Uh, they were at a basketball game, and LeBron, they do it all the time. Too. Oh, yeah, okay, you got a good point there. All right, what, what, what about the black face? Oh, yeah, it was a blackout game. Mm -hmm. See. Oh, what about the video where, where the girl, the guy, was yelling and, and, and cat calling the girls to walk by? Yeah, that guy wasn't a part of the high school boys' crew. Um, what, what else are, are you going to come with? You got any other, any other smears? Instead of just tapping out and saying, we stuck our foot in our mouths. We overcommitted to a narrative. And now we're going to even try to switch it up and direct it from our mess up to the hat. Yeah, we might have went a little far. We might have said some hurtful things about the boys. But, but, it's the hat that did it. It drove us crazy like a bull. Like it was just, like it was a red, just cloth shaking in my face. And all I saw was red when I saw the hat. See, and that's why these people. These people that wear these red hats, mm -hmm. yeah, what that does, it drives us crazy to come up with stories and narratives and demonize people all because of the hat. So therefore, America, here's the message. If you don't want to be attacked, accused, shouted down, harassed, yelled at, doxxed, all of those things, then don't wear the Make, a great, make America Again, uh, Great Again hat and we won't have any problems. Walk around in silence and in shame and in fear to express your thoughts, your beliefs, your, your support, all of that stuff. As long as you're quiet, mum's the word, and we don't allow that, that uh, message to spread, yeah, you're good. And see, here's what really gets me. Notice the big PR campaign that just switched, went straight to the hat, uh-huh, and they just ran that narrative all day yesterday. And had the nerve to have this one lady come on. I don't know if she was on MSNBC or, or um, CNN. But she has the nerve to say that the hat. You see, they only let black people say this. See, they got to get the minorities on it. This lady said that the hat. Y'all ready for this? Was, was equivalent to the hood. Yeah. Yeah, you heard it. It represents. It's like seeing a white hood. That's the trigger that she gets when she sees the red hat. I'm thinking, wow, was that just a blow and a big fat pie in the face of every slave that ever lived, every victim of attacks by the KKK, all of those people. When is the last time you saw a group of people with MAGA hats run into someone's house, drag them out in the middle of the night and burn them? Or hang them. When is the last time you've seen a group of people with MAGA hats whipping people with whips and, and, and calling them all types of names? You blinking, blinking, you're not even a, a human being. All of that stuff. When is the last time you saw all those things? Maybe she's out of touch when it comes down to what real oppression is versus this made up stuff. Because it's political and you have to demonize the hat because the hat represents something totally contrary to y'all garbage that you're pushing into society. So if we can't get the kids, get the hat. Somehow, we got to get something out of this deal, okay? Mm -hmm. Instead of just coming out and tapping out and saying, we screwed this up because we're the fake, funky, crooked, corrupt, dirty, nasty, vomit-stained, poop-stained, throw-up-in-the-mouth, uh, diarrhea with peanuts, dumpster juice, gangrene, liberal media and Democrats. 
So, you've been listening to Kevin and Kevin's Corner. Check me out every Wednesday, 7.30, live in Kevin's Corner. And if you didn't catch the live show last night, if you got some free time, check it out. Man, we had a great time last night. Also, um, don't forget to check out Extreme Tees. Uh, they're my sponsor. Great paraphernalia. Paraphernalia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clothing, how about that? Um, great clothing. Uh, check out their link if you have to put in a promo code. My name is the promo code. You get 10, 20%, 20% off. All right. And also, um, hit like, share, uh, the notification button, and subscribe. We almost at 100,000. We're going to kick it. We're going to kick it when we hit 100 grand. Um, and then finally, if you want to donate to Kevin, Kevin's Corner, there's a link in the bottom. Find me on Facebook and Twitter, and we'll see you next time in Kevin's Corner, which right now is out of town at some very nice hotel. God bless.